Sit down. Be humble. Sit down. Be humble. Sit down. What's good? What's good? Um, all right. Making sure my door is closed. Everybody sleep. I can't interrupt them. <laughs> I live with like vampires. They go to sleep. Uh, well, we all just got weird sleep schedules. But anyway, I uh, I posted earlier about how my, phone, my I'm essentially without a phone now, and I was walking to a speedway. It's a competition for sheets. If you aren't familiar with speedway, it's like it's like Seven Eleven or sheets, whichever one you're. Comp- uh, familiar with, um, but uh, walking a speedway earlier, and I was thinking about how now I don't have a phone, and how deprivation has lately. I've I've been noticing that I've been going through deprivation, and not like sleep deprivation or anything. But I need to make a note that sleep depri- deprivation affects um, behavior, just like hunger. So I need to make a note of that. Don't make me forget that. Um, Or don't let me forget that. I have to make a note of that or I will forget it. But uh, deprivation in terms of uh, deprivation in terms of let's see, I haven't had sex in like two months, which is we for me excuse me but I'm coming to the terms with it that big picture it's all right um it's really not a big deal it's another thing in life really it's not something that's necessary and that's real big for me you know what I mean and I was also thinking how what was it? I don't. Uh, I don't drink. I don't really have a social life anymore. So another thing that I look at is all right. It's not something that I need, even though being a member of a social species, I do need it. And I, I, I socialize. I socialize. I got roommates, so I mean, I socialize with them. But in terms of just being out there in the world, I really don't socialize. Um, also, I noticed what was, it? Uh, what was the last thing uh, in terms of deprivation. Um, oh, my phone, man, the water, hit, the rain hit my phone. One little raindrop hits the crack. must have hit it at the perfect spot because my phone's gotten wet before. But this one little raindrop, man, like one day, a week and a half ago, hits the phone and I've been without a phone since. It comes on every now and again, but it like teases me. It's only playing with me. A cruel tease. Uh, what I realized in all of those things happening is it would seem like those are a series of unfortunate events, but in actuality, it hasn't been in some respects and in, in a way that it's kind of major, actually, because it's allowed me during that time of deprivation of my material items um, or of those things that most people seem to need these or tell themselves that they need is that I've actually thought my thinking has elevated during this time. I'm like thinking much better. (laughs) Crazy. It's like before I was only thinking at like 60% capability. And now I'm like at an 80%. I won't say I'm I'm at a hundred percent already, but I'm definitely, uh, I feel like, um, that I'm at 80% um, wisdom. Uh, the things I've been coming up with lately during this time of deprivation. So, in a way, it's unfortunate, while at the same time being all. So, I, I find that strange and ironic and all that good stuff. What did I want to talk about? Oh, this video. I was just watching um 
I was just now actually watching a debate between Gavin McGinnis and Jesse the Body Ventura. And I found it interesting on both aspects. Um, what I found real interesting was there are there were some points that Gavin McGinnis did make that I found myself agreeing with. Um, I think it was, uh, I forgot the points now. I think it was something about how the voter, how um, the government's messing with the voting rights or something like that. I forgot what it is, but he did make a couple of points, surprisingly, that I did agree with. But most of what he said I disagreed with. And um, I found, what I found notable was, they weren't even talking about this, but it, what they were talking about sparked a memory in my mind, and a memory of this um, a subject of this week, that was this week, this group called Antifa, anti-fascist, anti, anti, Antifa, Antifa, whatever you want to call it, anti-fascist. They're a group of liberals that go around beating up on, excuse me, the radical, white, like white nationalists, white separatists, and white supremacists. Now, call me crazy. <laughs> But why is it this like the number one top story in black America? <laughs> there is a group. Let me repeat it again. There is a group of white people that are going around called Antifa that are going around beating up um, racist, uh, supremacist, nationalist. Uh, on the far right. This is supremely breaking news. For some reason, I mean, now they're being painted as an evil organization because they were so, something happened at Berkeley, I guess people beat up a little bit too bad. It got might have got a little out of hand. Listen, I don't advocate violence. But what I am is can I like advocate violence and still be in support of this group at the same time? First off, salute. Salute. What has been taking so long? <laughs> can I like release a moment of laughter? And, and I'm not laughing out of making fun. I am laughing out of joy. I am laughing out of unbridled um release of endorphins right now. This is awesome. This is awesome. We have developed and matured and progressed to a point that we have a group of whites that are not cowardly hiding in the shadows that have come out and said not only are they against racism, but they are violently opposed to it. Why is this the number one news story on BET? This is amazing. If if there was ever a uh, if we were ever looking if blacks were ever looking or the country period was ever looking for a sign of progress. Is Antifa not it? Regardless of their tactics, let's let's forget the tactics part. Just think of the very concept of a group of whites who have taken the position that they are violently opposed, not only to hate the symbolism of hate, such as the Nazi flag and the Confederate flag, but the very speech of it. And let me tell you how um, unruffled, how ruffled they have the um, far right, the usually um, braggadocious and uh, boisterous far right. Because this is what surprised me about these people. Because I'm seeing 
um, concern, a very, very huge um, look of concern. Look at um, Richard Spencer of the all right speaking about the about Antifa. I see a look of concern when I see Gavin McGinnis speaking in reference to the Antifa. I see a look of concern when I see Jordan Peterson speaking about Antifa. I see a look of concern when I see any of these propagandists for the far right speak in reference to Antifa. All of a sudden, these people who are their gun-loving tough guys always talking their violence and how they're the dark empire that does not care about anything, all of a sudden, they've empowered. If you listen to any of these people talk about Antifa, you see sheer terror in their eyes. They're scared, more scared of them than the ISIS. Call me crazy. But for the first time in, I think, since slavery started, There's a group of white people that's truly afraid of another group of white people. And this time it's not the ones who are the racists that are holding the hammer. Call me crazy. I don't want to be premature and say a tide is turning. It's too early. But my, by golly, I see progress. That's all I'm saying. Salute to the Antifa. No, I support, support violence. You know what I salute? I salute the very idea that there are a group of white people who are out there not just voicing their opinions against racism, who are not just um, complicit in silence, tacit agreement with um, racism but who are putting their actions behind their values, behind their morals. And these people need not just um, to be shown and painted in a light. These people need to be acknowledged and commended and saluted. I love human beings.